Hello, I'm Miss Donna, and today I'm going to read you one of my favorite books from when I was growing up, and one of my favorite books to read to my children, called Christina, Katerina, and the Box, by Patricia Lee Gouch, and it's illustrated by Doris Byrne. This is the back cover. Christina, Katerina, and the box. And Miss Gouch dedicated the book. It says, For Our Christina. This book was written in 1971. Christina Katerina liked things. Tin cups and old dresses worn out ties and empty boxes. Any of those things, but mostly boxes. Hat boxes, bakery boxes with see-through lids, shoe boxes. Best of all, she liked big boxes. So she was happy indeed one sleepy summer day when even her sometimes friend Fats Watson was out of town to see a truck deliver a great tall box. It came on a refrigerator. Oh, how grand and new, Christina's mother said, looking at the refrigerator. Oh, it is, it really is, said Christina, looking at the box. And she quickly claimed the box for her own and dragged it under the apple tree. To mother, who was very neat and tidy, it seemed that boxes were for basements or trash barrels, not for front yards under the apple tree. But she decided that it couldn't hurt. It couldn't possibly hurt for one or for a day or two to have that big box in the front yard there under the apple tree. That afternoon, Christina's father cut a window and a door in the box, and Christina painted on turrets, a drawbridge, and bolts for the door. And the box became a castle. Inside, she put sticks on the window in for iron bars, and she brought in all her cups and saucers, and a lot of Fig Newtons in case there was a battle and she couldn't get out. For two days, she and her bears lived and played in her castle peacefully. Look who's coming. Until Fats Watson came home. He sneaked into her castle while she was out to lunch and ate all her Fig Newtons. And she locked him in until he hollered, I'm sorry, 15 times. When she finally let him out, Fats gave Christina's castle a kick, and over it went, smack on its side. Mother came out and saw the fallen box. I see that's the end of the castle, Christina, she said with a smile. She started to haul it away. But that's no castle, said Christina, hauling it back again. That's my clubhouse. And it was for three long days right there under the apple tree. Christina changed the door into, changed the window into a door and the door into a window. She put in two benches for members and a chair for the president and she painted keep out members only and danger to enemies on the outside. And she let Fats join. Then they met in the clubhouse, which was very dark and very secret when the door was closed. And they spit on a nickel and swore to be friends forever. And they were. Until one day when Fats got very angry at always being vice president. 
He climbed on the clubhouse roof and promised to sit there until Christina made him president. Only the roof caved in first and Christina disbanded the club. When mother saw the satted box, she brushed her hands together. Now she would have her nice, neat yard. Well, she said, that is the end of the clubhouse. She tugged it towards the street. But that's no clubhouse, said Christina, tugging it back again. That's my racing car, Hermione, and I'm late for my race. Before speeding off, Christina put the top on the bottom, turned the window into a cockpit, and on the sides painted two magnificent curling silver horns, which she blasted at Fats every time she rounded the apple tree. <laughs> For two days, she raced around the yard and won every time. Until Fats that he'd take a look under the motor, that it didn't sound quite right. And here he's using a special stethoscope to listen to the motor. When he cut off the nose to get to the motor, the car collapsed. Christina's mother was relieved. Well, that is the end of the racing car, she said, and she pulled the cardboard towards the trash barrel. But that's no racing car, said Christina, pulling it back again. That's the floor of my summer mansion, and I'm going to have a ball. And she did, right there under the apple tree. She patted the box out flat and drew furniture on each flap a stove and a refrigerator for the kitchen, a bed for the bedroom, and a grand piano and violin for the living room, so there would be music for her ball. Then she and the bears and Fats got dressed up in gowns and high heels, and they invited kings and queens and some presidents and one vice president to come. And everybody came, and they danced, and danced until their feet hurt, and they had to take their shoes off. Even without shoes, Christina had a wonderful time. Until... Fats decided the floor needed scrubbing. He sprayed it down with a garden hose and mopped it until the floor puckered and grew lumpy and finally fell apart. When Mother came out a little later and looked at her front yard, she shook her head and said, well, and then, is this the end of your grand floor? What floor? asked Christina, who was running by. Oh, you mean that old ragged box? Let's do throw it away. Mother breathed a sigh. At last, she could have her nice, neat yard. But quick, Christina said. Fats's mother got a washer and dryer today. And he's bringing two ships down now. I said my mother wouldn't mind a bit if we sailed them here in front of our yard, right under our apple tree. And there they are. It's amazing what something so simple as a cardboard box can do to provide us lots of imagination and fun. We don't really need toys, do we? Anyway, thank you for listening while I read Christina, Katerina, and the box. I hope you have a wonderful day today and you take good care of yourself and do some fun, imaginative things. Bye now.